Hey everyone, welcome to Brick Vault. Today is another LEGO Top 10 Mocks of the Week episode where I show you guys the coolest custom creations I happen to see people building in LEGO throughout this last week. I don't show you any pictures in any particular order of best to worst, just 10 favorite creations. And as always, there are a ton more than just 10 in this video. Links to everybody that I'm showing off are in the description below. I highly recommend you check them out. And before I jump into the first creation of the week, I do want to say the custom custom build that went up in our web store this week is Rick's Spaceship from Rick and Morty. Recently I found some extra time to do some designing myself so this is actually a build that came from me and like so many of my creations uh, this is something that I was working on years ago, dropped, picked it up again, worked on it a bit, dropped it again for another year and then this is the final iteration or at least the most recent iteration of a much more updated version of Rick's ship. It's roughly minifigure scale, hard to kind of judge with a cartoon show like this, and I focused on making the details better and also the construction a lot easier because there are some slight bending and I guess I suppose illegal building techniques in this particular uh, ship that you see here. Any and all support from you guys is always greatly appreciated. You can check us out at www.brickvault.toys, top link in the description below. And now let's jump into the very first build of the week. We actually have a lot of new designers featured this week. This is from Mansur Solomon, and the title is Kini Nui. I hope I said that right. This is a scene from, I think, one of the early Bionicle uh, storylines. And frankly, I don't actually know much about uh, the Bionicle story. I was just taken aback by the level of detail that we see here in this micro scale. The White Temple in particular has some amazing techniques. I don't know, how, I mean, I'm looking close now, but it really does blow my mind uh, just to see how well he got those slope lines to match up between all of those different larger triangular uh, harshly sloped pieces. There's hardly a point of space between these open edges. It looks so clean at a micro size. The nature and organic builds look wonderful, especially with a lot of those round whip pieces. And the foreboding temple entrance or cave entrance on the other side very much grabs your attention. Micro scale building requires a lot of interesting creative choices. And this is just a wonderful example of both great architecture and organic pieces together. From the designer Flavio, we have the build WM3. This very much looks like a Gundam or, you know, larger exosuit inspired build. But what really grabs my attention, uh, particularly for this build, is the use of just wonderful pieces and you have just great shapes in almost every single little corner of this not so big build. The legs have a variety of interesting shapes along the side. The connection points around the head look wonderful. And I especially appreciate the use of that little bicycle helmet right in the center of the chest. The lines match up so cleanly here that it makes the builds feel a lot bigger and more detailed than it actually is. And that's a super successful look when it comes to this uh, relatively small robot that we've got going on. Jumping down to the third build or number eight moving down is from the designer Aero Okonen. It is called Sushi, simply. And there's actually another bento box that was really great this week as well, but there was just something so well done about the rice for the sushi. I just love the way it's so simple, but it really does just look like a perfectly delicious uh, piece of sashimi. You can see there's a couple of different rolls. I believe also wasabi, ginger, and a couple of drips of soy sauce. The build is simple, yet not actually that simple. It just looks wonderful. From a designer that we haven't featured in a really long time, but is such a talented builder, Forlorn Empire has built something called Meltdown. And the layers here are wonderful, both physically and in a metaphorical sense. This is a scene that I think almost every person on the planet can relate to in some way, shape, or form, either from personal experience or having witnessed a friend or someone else do it. And this little girl really does seem to be having a meltdown for sure. The details around her dress sort of starting to goo away and and drip down look great. I can't tell if the double chin is part of the melting process or if she just naturally has one. The extra pieces used for her angry face are awesome. It kind of reminds me of an art style from 
the oatmeal, if you know what I'm talking about. And I didn't realize there were eye printings on those trans clear one by two tiles, but it does wonders to kind of illustrate the teary eyes and then you can see the white streaks coming down her face. The rest of the model around her just does a, an excellent job of setting the scene, but not really distracting away from the cool part of the build. And this is one of the entries for his Mock Wars 2020 contest. It looks awesome. And then this is such a wonderful architecture build. It's kind of like a vignette, a large vignette. From Andrew Tate, it is called The Arrivals Hall Terminal 1 Idle Brick Airport. Inspired from airport terminal designs from the mid 20th century, there's some wonderful shapes here. I love the arch pieces and the inlaid orange and red along the walls. A similar inverted pattern can be seen along the floor, which is just awesome. I love how smooth that looks. And then the build for the support beams around those small kiosks looks so great. The angle goes out, then it comes back in. We have this arch cut out on the inside and a small yet tasteful little balcony slash walkway that goes above. I particularly like the textured interior of the roof. That is just, I mean, there's just so many things to like about this particular model and it clearly shows an extremely high level of attention to detail. Now this almost never happens for top 10 of the week, but we have another build from the same designer in one week from Forlorn Empire. It's called Let's Float Away. It was built a little bit over a week ago, but there were just some wonderful build choices made here that I couldn't not talk about. We have a micro scale build for a couple of floating hot air balloons, and they are silhouetted wonderfully against uh, this nice sky sunset backdrop. What I like here is that the colors along the sky also are underlaid underneath uh, those trans blue pieces used for the ocean as you get closer to that wall. It really helps illustrate the reflection of the light across the water, which is just something you don't see hardly ever if maybe this is the first time I'm seeing something done quite in this style. And it has a wonderful way of just marrying the colors of the background to the ocean along the bottom. The rest of the build is also quite nice. You can see a bit of a uh, modern building along the edge of the cliff, but really it was all about how that background matches up with the ocean for me. That's why I had to talk about it in this episode. Now from Alego, Alego comes Rafiki Selfie. This is also another build that was entered during Mock Wars, and the title is just exactly what you might think, Rafiki Selfie. The build here for the cartoon Baboon looks amazing. I love the fact that he's winking for the camera, and I can also appreciate that the pieces here look relatively simple. Like it, it has this deceptive way of feeling like a simple build, but ultimately I don't believe that it is at all. And the inclusion of the little banana logo instead of an apple on the phone is, is just a fun little nod. I always say it is hard to get expressive looks onto a larger Lego built character, and it's even harder to make them look recognizable to something that already exists. This is just a great example of a wonderfully expressive build. And then this is by far the impressive architecture, large scale thing of the week. This is this is from the 221 guy and it is called Lego Opera House. Now in the description, the 221 guy insists that this isn't his primary build, though the direct designer is not actually listed here. The 221 guy says they assisted in smaller elements, statues and things like that. But holy guacamole, this thing is impressive on both a large scale and a small scale, which makes it extra, extra impressive. The design for the columns is wonderful. I also really like the use of those uh, arched walls along the front of the steps. The statues are placed wonderfully. There's also just a ton of them. The horses look awesome with those wings. And there's just so much intricate and ornate detailing and stonework all over the exterior of this absolutely massive build. I see a reference to the Phantom of the Opera. I don't know if this is like the specific opera house where it's supposed to take place, but either way, this is definitely something worth taking a closer look at if you have extra time. Then now we are moving on to the designer Shio, who has made what is titled Photo Camera, but really this is the DSLR uh, 5D Canon. And the attention to detail here is absolutely awesome. The breakaway points for the charger and connector cables come apart just the way the camera normally does. The LED screen in the back has uh, what looks like a house somewhere in the snow. And I think every single button and placement for everything you see on this camera is exactly where it normally is. I've got a 7D which looks pretty similar to the 5D. And the longer I look at this piece, the more convincing it is that we're actually looking at 
a Canon 5D. It's just so cool. I like the use of all the different uh, sticker prints made and attached to all the different pieces. It really elevates the model just a little bit more. And this is one of those things that if you left it on a shelf somewhere uh, from a distance, I have a feeling you'd be able to convince a lot of people that this is a real camera, at least from afar. Now jumping on to the last build of the week from Stefan Goffers is Pirates Ago. And recently I have very, very much been in a Lego pirate building mood. So when I saw this, it just, oh man, it just captured me so well. I love the build for the sails. The ship is awesome. It's so simple along the hull, yet very ornate towards the back. But what really makes this a full and incredibly impressive piece is the underwater scene that you have below. The amounts of colors here and interesting intricate little design pieces used to make all the plants and coral and animals just is overwhelmingly impressive. And you can see that Hook is uh, making a guy walk the plank, but honestly, if I had a pair of flippers and a snorkel, I wouldn't I wouldn't be too bummed about it. Well, maybe the sharks might get in the way, but, uh, but anything outside of that pretty much makes me want to be right here in this moment on this ship above what looks like the most impressive and vibrant coral reef of all time. But that is going to be it for this week's top 10 mocks. We also have a web store like I mentioned in the beginning. I highly recommend you check out that link as well. Let me know which builds were your favorites in the comments below. Thank you so much for hanging out this long. If you enjoy our content, you can always like or subscribe and we'll see you next time at Brick Vault.